Hey guys, back with another super coach video and round eight was a really good round for my side. Could have been better actually, but I'll take it. I scored 2,261, putting me in the top 2%, and I moved up 11,386 spots, moving me up to 15,483 overall, and I won four out of four league matchups, put the icing on the cake to what was a great weekend scoring wise. On to defense, we have Rory Laird and Taylor Adams doing what they do, scoring really well. Dylan Robertson, only the 84, got tagged a little bit by Jack Silvani, stopping his run out of defense and intercept marking, so did limit his scoring a little bit, but getting an 84 and what wasn't his best game is a pretty good sign. Zach Tui a 66, and yeah, it was very disappointing. And I think it's probably Paddy Dangerfield yeah, was was the only cat that was able to get into the game scoring wise. Tui just yeah, he couldn't get into it. And I guess that fumble near the end of the game, which ended up resulting in Fantasia's game ceiling goal, I guess that summed up his night. So yeah, just poor from him. Caleb Marchbank a 63, a really poor first half from him, especially the first quarter, but he recovered, and we'll take the 63 from him. His break-evens, I think, are 47, so he's definitely still got some more money to make. And Nick Newman, what else can you say about this guy? 151, a late in, and it's just just unbelievable. There's nothing there's nothing much more you can say about him. I was supposed to loophole Jared Berry 71. I reversed the trades that I made last week. I got in Berry instead of McNeese. He scored the 71, I thought that was good enough, put in Nick Newman to get Barry 71, and what do you know, I get 80 extra points from Nick Newman's 151, just unbelievable. He's, he's in to make a lot of cash now, uh, assuming that John Longmire is going to keep him in the side, he has to after that, you can't be serious, like, you have to keep him in the side after that. Yeah, anyway, onto the bench, Barry, of, co of course, with a 71, and Tom Stewart with a 46. Yeah, not not great from Stewart, but his break-even's around the mid-30s, I think, so he can still beat that. Onto the mids, Paddy Dangerfield, 112. Like I said earlier, probably the only cat that got into the game scoring-wise. So, yeah, it just wasn't, it wasn't a good night at all for Geelong. Tom Mitchell, I took his vice-captain score of 135 to get the 270s, so just great stuff from T Mitch. Scotty Pendlebury, a 76, I guess he was, you know, in the back of his mind, he was probably wondering whether he had to leave the game, but yeah, it probably had an impact on his game overall, only scored the 76, pretty poor from him. Joel Selwood, a 78, just not good enough from Selwood, he's had a pretty poor two weeks now. Wait, around six, seven, eight. Yeah, pretty poor last three weeks, to be honest. The 95 wasn't that bad, but yeah, the, the last two out of three weeks, yeah, it's been pretty poor from him, and he's dropped all the way down to 547. He's going to be a pretty hand, handy upgrade target for, for some people. Josh Kennedy, the 136, he's back to his best. He had a brilliant first half. Slowed down a little in the second half. But yeah, you definitely take 136 any day of the week. So good stuff from JPK. Nat 5 for 99. Just not getting the big scores. He's consistent, but not quite going big. So yeah, he's definitely not one to trade out as of now. But yeah, you just hope for much bigger scores from him in the near future. Paddy Cripps, he was due, wasn't he? 157. Massive game from him. Could have been more if he decided to take the set shot late in the second quarter, but massive second half from Paddy Cripps, and I'm just proud of him. Great point of difference option, and he's and he's proved it with a big score against the Saints. And Sam Palpepper with a 70, and he's definitely got some more money to make still. I think his break-evens are 54, so maybe once that 97 leaves the rolling three rounds, maybe his break-even might increased by quite a bit, depends on what he gets in round 10 against the Cats. We'll have to see what happens there, but he's got the bye, so he'll be staying at 3.11 for another week. 
So, yeah, good stuff from Pal Pepper, a 70, we'll take that. Jakey Barrett, a 59, decent, would have liked a little more, but we'll take that from him. On to the Rucks, Toby Nankervis with a 92, he was pretty poor for the first three and a half quarters, maybe even three quarters, and a big fourth quarter, got his score all the way up to the 90s, um, happy about that, knowing that it could have been much worse. Brody Grundy, with only the 82, had a massive first quarter, and I feel like he got rubbed. Maybe his disposal efficiency wasn't good enough. Maybe he didn't have enough hitouts to advantage. Haven't looked enough into the detailed stats, but I do feel like he got robbed. But what can you do? I guess we'll just have to take the 82 from him. Jack McRae with a 105, just continuing to score well. Con continuing to score consistently, so... Definitely take that from him. Luke Dahlhaus, a 65, a poor game from him, dropped around 30 plus K in cash, so yeah, it's disappointing. Jack Steele with 114, great stuff from him. Dan Butler, a 36, and he dropped in price, and he's going to have to go this week. And Isaac Heaney brought him in for Houston, and he scores 130. Just brilliant stuff from Heaney, and that's what you want to see from him. And... Parsons with a 38, just, oh, it's poor stuff, and his break-even's a 42, I think. So, yeah, his break-even skyrockets, and yeah, I didn't expect it, to be honest, and yeah, it's, this is disappointing stuff. And he's only at 168 as well, he, he's probably the second coming of Pickett, really. So, yeah, on to league matchups, let's move on to game day. So in my own league, I beat Joel by uh, 100, 184, I think. And it came down to that last game with Newman, Kennedy, and Heaney all going big. Paddy Cripps as well. He had Josh Kelly. So yeah, there was... And also Tom Lynch as well. That was a major factor there. But yeah, I put it on Cripps and my Swans players as the reason why. I won that matchup, and onto Shorty's Super Coach League. Got my third win there, beating Simon, Team Ranger. And yeah, we'll put we'll put this win on my Swans players, Rips and Jack Steele. And yeah, that's probably the reason why I won by 200 odd. Let's see, yeah, 2042. So that's good stuff. And let's see, what am I at now? Ninth. And in my own league, I think I'm at 4th, 3rd, something around that. Yeah, so that's good stuff for my leagues. 4 out of 4 wins. Very happy with that. On to trades. Like I said earlier, Dan Butler has to go. And I'm not sure. I'll do this for now. I, I, it's similar to last week. I'll reverse trades depending on teams come Thursday night. But for now, I will trade out Butler, put, let's bring in Balik into the forward line. Let's trade out Declan Mountford. And bring in Berry to the mids, opening up a midfield defender link. And let's see here. First guy to trade in. Oh, Lockie Neal, the most expensive now. Been unbelievable he's had he's been red hot form the well, first guy is McNeese I heard he was really good in the BFL that's just what I heard I hope that's the truth and I hope he gets a spot but after the way Essendon played honestly I kind of doubt it but we'll put him in for now and the last guy here to trade in David Myers and with this trade, I bank in 247,000. I don't need to be trading out. Oh, I don't need to be trading in premiums right now. I don't feel like I need. I don't feel like I'm ready to do that right now. So these are the trades I'm going to make. Two downgrades. Let's let's see. Captaincy. Oh man, there's plenty of options here. Looking at the schedule. To the right, but I feel like Joel Selwood. I feel like it's his time to go big. 
first game in Simmons Stadium for the season. We know he can go off. Yin Geelong, so we'll, we'll see. And captaincy. Oh man, I want to put it on Cripps. Very unique option. I really want to. Feel like he's really building, building back up to his best. That 157 says a lot. But you know what? For now, I'll play it. I don't even know if I'm playing it safe here with Pendles. You can't quite trust him, but I feel like he's going to respond. After a poor score against Essendon, he responded with a 149 against Geelong. And I feel like after a 76 here, he'll respond again against the Hawks. Hopefully that's the case. So I'll give him the captaincy for now. And what else do I want to do here? Remove the emergency. Put that up there. Yeah, the only downside to these trades is that I have Parsons on field, so I really have to, I really have to solve that problem soon. Yeah, Parsons off field. But yeah, this will be my team for round nine. So yeah, great week. Thanks to my Sydney players and Paddy Cripps. So yeah, I'm just, hopefully it builds up to some more consistent scoring like this. Hopefully we get rid of the 1900s and 2000s from now on. That was, it was a great week. I'm hoping for more of that type of scoring. So yeah, once again, this is most likely going to be my round 19, unless I have to reverse trades, depending on teams on Thursday. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.